Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So we're going to start with the platform as we do a usually. So uh, let's check about the homeworks. It's going to be uh -huh. this one. Okay, the class of tonight is actually is this one. Okay, and the exercise is going to be this one. So for you to check what will be the option about paragraph and then choose the color. That will be it. Okay, and we are going to check about the um, attendance, of course. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Alejandra Michelle Wesson Nagel. Ana Selmi Chavez. Edwin Alexander Ayala Eras. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Aldamas. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Presa. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Ah, she's here. Okay. Hey, I see that Manuel also is here. Hey, my Present. Baby. Okay, perfect. Present teacher. Very good. And also, Carla. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, very good. So we're going to start with a little video. Okay, and then we're going to continue with other parts. So also remember that we need to finish the platform by the by tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day to finish the platform. So let's jump into that one. Okay. So Let's see the video. Remember to check pronunciation, vocabulary, and uh, uh, check what is this about so we can provide opinions or comments. Here we go. What is the common elements between managing companies all over the world and teaching in a school in, in Molenbeek. Leadership. In both jobs, you need strong leadership to manage companies and to teach to kids who face huge difficulties. Let, let me tell you how I came to that conclusion. For, for 25 years, I've been managing companies. I've tried to make sure that every single quarter was, was more profitable. And, and I really enjoyed that. I've learned that strong leaders apply four basic, simple principles. The, the first one, they believe that their team can achieve great results. And because they believe that their team can achieve great results, their team start to believe also they can achieve great results. Second thing, they set goals, develop a vision for their company. Third, they make sure that this goal, this vision, becomes the everyday priority of their 
people, their employees. And last, great leaders, they plan carefully and purposefully to make sure they achieve their objective. I mean, that's what great leaders are doing. And I've tried to do that for 25 years. I mean, it's really a tough job. Four years ago, I was in my mid-40s, and I faced what we call a midlife crisis. A midlife crisis is a very simple concept. I mean, suddenly you realize that living is not forever. I mean, it's a little bit like a ghost curve. You know, you're at the top of the hill, and suddenly you see the end of the horizon. And you ask yourself this basic question, what do I do now? I mean, which track do I take to go down the hill? I mean, do I take the same track, or do I take another route to go down? And personally, I felt the need to, to give more sense to what I was doing. And so I totally changed my professional career. From a CEO, I became a, a teacher in Molenbeek, in what some magazine called the Bronx of Brussels. I'm teaching the professional section to kids or young adults between 15 to 22 years old, mostly coming from the American communities. And those children are coming from low social economical backgrounds. I mean, they, they are what we call underprivileged children. I thought that teaching would be great. I mean, you, you know, you're working, what, 20 hours per week? You have plenty of vacation? You are sitting in front of people eager to learn from you. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure if there are teachers in the audience today, but you know that the reality is slightly different. I mean, the start of my career was not easy. I mean, my colleague warned me. They, they told me, Pierre, well, don't put your expectation too high. I mean, their motivation is very low. They don't know much. Well, I thought they were testing me or killing me. But actually, they were right. In my class, none of my students were capable to give me the results of 10% of 100. When I talk about Stockholm, they thought I was talking about a rap singer. And, and Jacques Brel is the name of a subway station in Brussels. You know? <laughs> and when I face the reality of this new job, I say, but how is it possible that kids who have spent 10 to 15 years in a bench in a school in Belgium know so little? I mean, kids who are far of being stupid. They have a great sense of humor, good common sense. I mean, wh what happened to them? I mean, why are they in this situation? So I also realized that those kids who face disaster results in some classes actually achieve very good results in some other classes. Same kids, different results. So actually, there were two types of teachers. They were the teacher where the students achieve very poor results, and the other one where the teacher and the students achieve great results. So this really triggered my attention. So I went to talk to both my colleagues, and to the first group of colleagues where the, the kids achieve poor results, I asked them this very simple question. What can I do to make my student progress? And the answer I received were always going in the same direction. Well, Pierre, what can we do? How do you want to teach to kids where there's no books at home? Where, where the parents do not speak French or Flemish friendly? Well, let, let me tell you the truth, Pierre. That's what my colleague told me. There is very little that teachers or school can do. They even talk to me about a lost generation. Let, let me tell you today what the other group of colleagues told me the one where the kids achieve great results. Amongst those groups, there was one teacher, Mrs. Anthony, and she, she's a French teacher. And in her class, the kids were always there, with high motivation, and they have good grades. So I went to ask her this question, but how do you do it? I mean, what's your secret? I mean, do you pay them? And Mrs. Anthony is a great teacher, so she really took the time that day to explain to me her principle of teaching. 
And she told me, Pierre, if, if you want your kids to progress, you have to apply four basic principles. The first one, she said, you have to believe in them. You have to believe to make sure that every single one of them can achieve great results, regardless where he or she is coming from, whether her parents are rich or poor, whether he was called Mohammed or Jean. And you need to make sure that also they know that you believe in them, so they start also to believe that they can achieve great results. Once you deeply and truly believe in them, you have to set a goal which is ambitious, measurable, meaningful for your student. And she gave me a great example. She told me, take Sadia. Sadia don't like reading. And Mrs. Anthony gave her a very ambitious goal. She said, well, Sadia, by the end of the year, by, November, by June, you will read a book of Barjavel. It's not an easy one. And you will do it in two weeks' time, and you will enjoy it. By November, I saw Sadia finishing a book of Amélie Nothomb, 102 pages, and she was eager to start a new one. So once you set the goal, you need to make sure that the goal that you have given to your student becomes the everyday priority of the student and their family. You need to invest in their life. She gave me another example, Hannan. Hannah had a great deficiency in spelling. And because of that, Mrs. Anthony told her, well, you need to stay at school every day after the normal school time. The parents of Hannan will not allow this. So Mrs. Anthony went to see the parents of Hannan in her home, discussed with them, convinced them, and told her it was the right thing to do for Hannan. Hannan is now spending every Tuesday and Thursday at school, and she's making dramatic progress. The last principle that Mrs. Anthony told me is probably the most difficult one. You have to plan purposefully. From the objective that you have defined, you have to plan backwards to create an efficient path to success. Take Mustafa. Mustafa is one of my students. I mean, he's incapable to concentrate for more than two minutes unless you talk about football. Okay? <laughs> his goal was to receive his goal was to be able to summarize in 200 words a very difficult article from the Monde newspaper. Every week, Mrs. Anthony gave him an article a little bit longer, a little bit more complicated, so that Mustafa was capable to see his own improvement. On, on that specific day, the 10th of October 2009, Mrs. Anthony probably gave me the, the best speech lesson on teaching, but on leadership. Believe in your team. Set goals, like for Sadia. Invest in your student, like, like for Hannan. And plan carefully, like for Mustafa. But like every great leader, Mrs. Anthony had also a small secret. You know, and I remember, oh, she almost whispered to me that secret. And she told me, Pierre, you and your student will have to work hard because it will not be easy. And she's right. I'm working much more than 20 hours per week, you know, much more. And I've learned so much in those last four years. I thought that teaching had to do with, I don't know, sense of humor, authority, respect, mastering the content of your classes, your courses. Yeah, of course, teaching has to do with all this, but for those kids, who have lost so much of self-confidence, who are so far behind, where school do not have meaning anymore, teaching as leader show outstanding effect. I mean, since, since then I've tried to, to apply those four principles. Uh, it's not easy. I fail many times. I mean, um, sometimes my vision is too high, it's not clear enough. Sometimes I come home very frustrated because of the lack of motivation of my student. But there is one thing I don't give up. It's the first principle. I always believe they can succeed. There is a great quote on leadership, which said that true leadership lies in guiding others to success, in ensuring that everyone is performing at their best, doing the work they are pledged to do, 
and do it well. This is exactly what great teachers are doing in Molenbeek. They're probably the best leader I've met. So, so four years ago, I, I've decided to change my life. You know, I was in my midlife crisis, and, but I'm still leading. Well, there's a big difference from my previous job as a CEO. There's no better feeling than the one that you have when you feel and you see one of your students who was supposed to fail going to upper school or open his shop, like, like Dunya just opened her shop a few weeks ago in XL, number 125 Rue de Livourne. I told her I will make some advertising for her. Okay? <laughs> so please go to see her. Nelson Mandela said once that education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. So let's make sure that in this country, in 2013, all leaders will use this weapon so that every children will obtain access to excellent education regardless of their social economical background. Thank you. Hey, what did you get from the video? All right, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Like, like, like a, like a joke, teacher. Uh, so, somebody said, uh, "I understand. Uh, I understand neither the the beginning nor the last." But <laughs> <laughs> the video, no, teacher. Interesting, really, uh, very interesting, uh, because. Uh, all of the, all the entire speech for the presenter is fantastic, but uh, no, but for the uh, at the beginning, uh, she she mentioned uh, the experience that uh, Mrs. I, I I don't remember the the the, the how do you say apellidos last names last names okay, but. Uh, Firstly, uh, I, I I hope don't don't take more more time. But uh, the video oh. was uh, interesting. Right, that I I can tell is uh, uh, every every student, every child, uh, every child, every child uh, have a different uh, situation that uh, uh, can help to, to learn uh, fast or the op opposite, to, to, to have a low, uh, low learning. But uh, every child have a different situation, uh, different weakness, but uh, I, I, I want to uh, express a, 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 a little experience with my daughter when uh, she has in high school. Nowadays, he is, uh, uh, he is studying in the university. But uh, we, can, we can, how do you say, uh, teacher, sorry, uh, venimos de una confinamiento uh, we came we came we came, uh -huh. uh, we, we came uh, for the pandemic uh, uh, you know uh, me, my daughter uh, study to uh, almost three years uh, because nine grade uh, first uh, a grade, nine grade, the first grade, uh, grade of uh, high school online, different to face to face uh, learning. But uh, in the first, uh, how do you say, trimester? Quarter. Uh, in the first quarter of the year, uh, they uh, show me the, the notes, but uh, 
they, they uh, were uh, acceptable. But I, 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 I believe in, in this is the the important. This is my my my, my encourage. I, 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 I talk with my daughter and say, hey, listen, listen, honey. Uh, I believe in you. You are amazing. You are an excellent uh, student. I believe in your cap capability, and I don't. I don't want uh, you are a top of, of the student, but I. I. I want to. I want to to take your note that you that you that whatever you want. This result is mine. This result I want. If you want a better note, that'll be good. I I I believe in you, but you know if you need improve, and then my daughter was an excellent day. Uh, she improved in all uh, how do you say materials? And all the subjects. The subject, okay, and all in the the next uh, quarter, uh, she 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 was in the. Second and the last quarter, she was the number one because I, I believe in him. the the last part is the most important for the speech because she mentioning that Mandela self education is a the, the powerful weapon right to 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 win a, the 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 the, the world <laughs> something like that but. Uh, in quotation mark, a, a good education, an excellent education. This is the that that all all kids all some need to 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 have a high level in in all areas. That's how I think, teacher. Thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you very much for your comments. And yeah, I mean, you are right. Every situation is different, right? Um, every everybody had different reality at yes. home or different neighborhood. Yeah, the yes. environment. Yes. Okay, and yeah, I, I I believe that what you did is something very important to speak to motivate, right? Yes, because motivation is very important. I mean, yes. Not only for kids, for everybody, for us, right? So it's, it's a very good thing. Good, perfect. Any other comments from the video? Good evening, me, hey. teacher. Good evening, hello. I returned. <laughs> good, welcome back. <laughs> um, I remember some years ago and a slogan in our country education is the solution I remember for the education education um, this uh, premise that many people share but um, is not the only uh, there are other circumstance um, that contributes uh, to improving uh, living and uh, condition and how how the people learn and how um, parents or teachers uh, can be stimu stimulate or um, motivate uh the students but it's important um how the teach how the teaching no not only um, mathematical um language language if more important for some um, young people and how do um, 
How do you... Voy a preguntarle a Google. Ah, ok. I don't know what you want to say. Uh, which word are you looking for? Uh, mm, no me hizo caso, Google, pero cuando, ¿cómo usted los trate? La forma en que los trate. How you treat them. How you treat them. Is the more important for the young people because at the 14 and 21 <laughs> in in english i heard the say the age of the turkey is a difficult age in the life and need a more um motivated okay yeah very good so yes i mean when you are educating kids or teenagers it's very important i mean all the stages are very important but those stages um are going to uh, make a trend for the rest of their lives right so that is something that definitely is going to happen i believe that we remember when we were teenagers or kids, right? Things that our parents or our teachers did. And that is the way that we do some things right now. I mean, even years after that one, uh, still with us. So it's very important the way that we are going to educate uh, kids because on that depends many other things. Any other comments on the video, Penny? Anything that caught your attention? Okay, and uh, do you believe that kids? Okay, so, oh, go ahead. sorry, teacher. Go ahead. Okay, I believe only the the profession being a teacher is so difficult uh, because uh, you have to you have to understand different things of different ways uh, the that the the childs or even the adults think and. He says something interesting. Uh, believe in them. I think that every teacher has to believe in their students. It doesn't matter if uh, uh, they are falling in in the grades. I remember the pandemic was so difficult uh, for me being a teacher to my to my sis to my uh, kids. Imagine I don't have a passion. I oh my god! I want to kill my 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 boy because he doesn't pay attention. It's so difficult being a teacher. Oh my god! You need a lot of passion. You need a lot of comprehension. It's so difficult. And I the the most the most important thing that I listened from the the person that who was talking it was believing them. It doesn't matter what happened. Believe in your students. Believe that at the end they they go, they they are going to they are going to achieve the goal. Because um, sometimes it's difficult uh, trying with the difference uh, uh, characters characters. I don't know. Uh -huh. It's difficult. It's difficult trying. Uh, the different uh, the different kind of of people that are inside every head. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So yes, uh, I mean it doesn't matter. I mean what they do or what they don't do. Uh, as we were saying at the beginning, right? The reality is different. Not all the kids are the same. Some kids are good. I mean. We we'll go back to one thing that I guess Anasali said, emotional intelligence, right? We're different people. We're good for some things and we're bad for some other things. And we need to understand that one. The real problem is that the education I mean, and the classroom uh, is like a program that is the same for everybody. 
it shouldn't be that way. I know it's, it's not possible to change that one, but uh, there has to be different kinds of, of classes. For example, in the U.S., there is a workshop. Uh, so they there are some kids that they take that class because it's very easy to pass because they use credits in the United States. But in the workshop, I mean, they create with wood, they create houses or little things. And they, they realize sometimes that they are good with the hands, with the crafts, right? Maybe you're not good with math or English or any other thing, but you are good for something, right? Uh, so that is something very important. Uh, yeah, to study, to have certain knowledge is important, but then you have to realize what is your path in life, right? Good. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting the, the way that schools treat them. I don't know if I told you this before, but I remember that there was a friend of mine that he was a teacher, he was a professor at the university, and he was part of the government. And he was sent to the U.S. to, to go to a, a school for genius kids. And he was so excited about that one. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna check into that one. And he said that when he came into the school, I mean, he thought he was going to see uh, kids solving problems in the whiteboard and so many things. But what he saw is that the teacher, he was playing with the kids. He was throwing a little disc. And, and the other people with him said, that is the class, that is the class for, for the kids. And he said, how is that possible? Right? But then he realized that when they were playing, the professor started to ask, I mean, if I send the little disc inclined in this, in this position, what is going to be the speed and the direction? And the kids started to say, oh, if you do it like that, the direction is going to be calculated like this and other thing. But playing, right? That was very interesting because teachers, they need to adapt. They need to adapt to, to the class they have. Even, even if this the same class is not the same group. So you need to adapt yourself, do different things, okay? Of course, as you say, uh, it's not easy, but I believe that if you have the spirit, the vocational part, you are able to do it. I know that there are some teachers that is like, okay, do exercise in no page number five and this is right. Uh, it's not the way. I mean, it's necessary to do the books, but also it's necessary to analyze, to go beyond, okay? And uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's difficult, yes, it's difficult, but it's it's nice. Uh, maybe the saddest part is that the payment is not that good, at least here in Latin America. In other countries, being a professor is a very good job, but in Latin America, it is not, right? So, uh, but anyways, uh, also, uh, there is also the, the part of the parents, right? Parents also have to be an uh, important part of the education so it's it's like together as manuel did right so he as a parent he tried to motivate maybe there was no motivation at school or, or not enough but only a few words and, and that changes right they become different people so communication is also another factor that is very important so i have a question do you believe kids learn different than adults what do you think Yes, I think. Hello. Hello. Yes, I. My camera doesn't work. I think that uh, kids learned very, very different than adults do, because uh, you know uh, the kids ha um, has the uh, have the ability, you know, to catch very quickly the sense of, of, of topic when they are motivated, you know? On the, the methods with playing, it are also very effective with kids, you know? And nowadays it is very, very common in private school at least that the, the teachers are looking at first for the different intelligence way the children learn. For example, some kids are a math intelligent, 
or uh, kinetic intelligence or musical and art oriented intelligence and you know it is a uh, in my in my time you know if you didn't like math or so you were excluded from the group but uh, i was very hyperactive and i i have done everything very quickly and i was very uh, how do you say it in kieta in the class uh, and you were very active yes and really it was a pin on the ass for all the teacher i have had yes and but i have had i had very, uh, i was very lucky because uh, most of my teacher in the primary school uh, some way they understood that i was real i maybe i have a little bit of autism or something like a uh, hdd or something like that in my time nobody knew about that and then it was no way to to send me to a psychologue or something like that and only uh, the people uh, the teacher uh, was able to let me free how i wanted to learn and it, it, it has a very good results in my case therefore i think that teacher can learn faster than adults did and it depends and they can adapt also faster yes it depends always it depends always on the ability from teachers you know to adapt themselves to the ver very different ways of learning from kids okay so yeah you are very right and uh, yeah you know I, I do an exercise sometimes. I see as a lot of, when I'm in a meeting or uh, anything like that, I imagine everybody as a kid because we are, as kids here, right, different kinds of kids. We have responsibilities and we have to work in many other things. But we are kids. I mean, we sometimes laugh and enjoy things. and We deserve to be happy as well. And also, uh, yeah, we have characteristics very marked down. So that will be something interesting. And I can imagine you running on the on the classroom. That would be something that I can see here. So, and you are right. I mean, uh, nowadays uh, there are many things that they have labeled for for kids. Right? I remember that a few years ago I was working in a building with school, and there was this kid. This kid was very famous because he was active and he was spoiled a spoiled kid so um i mean he did many things and he he had this his sister on the same school she had she was around she was in fourth grade and he was in first and second grade or something like that i mean he sometimes he had he he throw things then the classroom to the teacher uh he uh stand up in the in the table in the desk as one time one time i mean there was the auditorium you know and he climbed the wall and he went to the roof in the auditorium i mean it was it was dangerous all the teachers they were oh my goodness this kid is going to jump and he's going to do something crazy i, I don't know and i i remember i was thinking why 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 this is happening why this kid has the necessity to climb the wall and, and get the attention of the adults, right? Uh, I don't know. He was with us, as, not a psychologist, he was with a psychiatrist in my name. And at the end, and at the end, he got uh, medicine. Uh, so he, he was very calmed down, and very, I don't know. But I was not that happy with that one. I know that there are experts. I totally understand and I didn't say anything. But the kid, I mean, in second grade, he was on drugs already. What is going to be the future of this kid? I don't know. I hope for the better, right? I don't know if the parents communicate with him. I don't know. The teachers, we, we tried to speak. He, he was not my student, but the teacher that he had she was very good 
and she tried to speak with him and he was, I mean, there were some meetings with specialists there and the kid never changed. So at the end, the mother, he, she decided to take the kid to a psychiatrist. And the result, of course, was medication. Medication, he was there all day long, very calm down. Uh, maybe he didn't understand what we were saying exactly. I mean, he was alive there and doing things, but it was shocking for me. I never saw anything like that. As I say, I didn't say anything because... I'm not the expert, right? It's, it's kind of difficult to see something like that. It's kind of strange. But you know, no, it is in, uh, I know, um, I have evidence because my neighbor uh, has worked as a teacher in the American school. In the fifth grade, 50% of the kids receive medication, you know, are medicated because of HDD. And I don't know, it is like a, a tendency or the like, uh, this very end, you know, the, the parents and the teacher could not uh, handle the kids, the, the, the behavior, behaviors of the kids, and then quickly to psychologists or to psychiatrists, and then this very easy, the way of giving medication, you know, I I I I do not agree with it. It is really very easy for parents and teachers, to psychologists and to and to psychiatrists, you know. Yeah. It is so be a in mod a mod. This is like, like a fashion. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I also remember uh, some uh, some other things about the schools, you know, because I also uh, taught in a different school. I mean, and I can compare, for example, uh, in in poor schools, the kids go and they hug you and they you say sit down. Yes, yeah, sometimes they run, they sometimes stand up, but if you say hey, everybody please sit down, we're going to continue with the class, they pay attention and things like that. So it was, it was good. But in schools, in schools, that school specifically was for, for rich kids. I mean, the kids there on the vacations in Lagos, they went to ski there in Nebraska or, I don't know, to Europe and things like that. And I saw that that behavior was different because, uh, I mean, for example, uh, in eighth grade, I remember that there were like five kids that whenever I came to the classroom, they were laying down on the floor. And I say, please, everybody stand that we're going to start the class. And they didn't and didn't do anything. They didn't listen to me. I had to call the director and the director had to come and say something. I mean, it was interesting because it's more a social thing, right? More than a mental, mental thing. They, they know that they pay a lot of money and that they can do whatever they want. So, uh, and they know that I can nag them, I can do anything about it, right? So it was very interesting for me because you see how the behavior, the social thing affects even kids, right? So, and I mean, for example, here in, in El Salvador on the schools, on the normal schools, I didn't see groups. I mean, there are groups of kids because they, they have friends, right? But in that schools, it's exactly like the movies in the United States. They were students that they don't speak with other students. I mean, it was exactly that one. It was, it was very interesting as well. So, because, I mean, I believe that everybody that we're here in, in the regular school, I mean, yeah, we have some group of friends, but we didn't say, oh, I'm not gonna speak with that because he's like this or like this other thing, right? We're friends, maybe we're not close friends. We say hello and goodbye and that's it. That's the way it is, right? But they were like that, like the American movie. Like I don't speak with him because he's he listened to rap music and that's not good, right? I don't know. That was interesting for me as well. How the environment. How uh, I I believe that the parents didn't didn't say do this, but they feel like empowered, right? They feel in a different way. Interesting, I say. Interesting. And they were very smart, very intelligent. 
I remember that I, I used to speak with them, with little kids, and they were very intelligent. They had very good education, but their behavior was like that. Of course, not all of them were. They were very nice kids. I mean, neat, very nice. But, but I think I think it is all. Maybe it is more social uh, problem uh, uh, is mental problem. You know, because yeah. all these kids has a dysfunctional uh, families, you know, and the, the parents are divorcing, the parents uh, live under stress, the parents uh, don't give uh, values, exam uh, examples, how to be tolerant, respectful, respectfully? Yeah. See. Respectful. And, you know, these values that we have learned at home in in our times you know at our houses in our homes and nowadays the the kids the kids arriving at the school it is no matter no matter of what is public or, or private you know they all come with a lot of problems to the school and in this kind of behavior you can't uh, recognize that they have not normal life, lives. Yeah. And then this, uh, this kind of behavior is the result, is the outcome of what they are living, experiencing in their own homes. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I believe that that is something that they perceive. Even when nobody teach them, they perceive the environment. I mean, it's like... I don't know. It's like, imagine that you get an, a job in a nice place and you are very poor, you don't have a car or anything like that, and you are very happy to be there. But if there are other people that they are, I mean, they always had, had jobs like that one very nice place. It's like another thing. It's not important. So uh, the value of things or processes or people are different depending on the environment. It's very interesting how how that works right it's very very interesting okay so um how well we're going to check today uh how we are going how adults can learn okay i don't know somebody else is going, going to say something teacher i'll go ahead hey thank you yes according to your last is different learning kids or adults definitely because uh, remember uh, yesterday I said that my 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 hobby uh, and when I have free time I take advantage for do something uh, with the goal to to help others right uh, many. Uh, Many years ago, when my when my daughter was in four, fourth grade, uh, I uh, I had a, a small group with my near friends of my my daughter to reinforce math. I don't I don't good math, but but I I try to 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 defend, <laughs> but I, 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 because in, in this time uh, uh, all uh, my my daughter uh, was in in a basics basic math, but I, and I I I try to to reinforce to to encourage to teach some. Uh, some ideas to 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 feel uh, that maths uh, are not impossible and then um, easier to 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 learn and suddenly yes I work I work for for that and this time the uh, five six uh, uh, kids may I say kids. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, learn. Okay. And this action helped to them. Uh, very good. But but 
I I I work I work with the group of my of the of uh, the church that I I belong uh, I belong to and and I we have we have a uh, people that does doesn't uh, no, neither write nor, nor read. An alpha, uh, an alphabet teacher. An alphabet, yeah. Oh, okay, they are an alphabet, and I, I, I try, right? I try to to help them. Uh, you know, work with an alphabet is is hard because they they didn't know anything, and and then. Start with uh, uh, the 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 most basic, like uh, to make a point, to make right, but and the behavior is is very very different because uh, work with 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 kids that run that uh, cry out with a, a noisy boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, is a, a very good experience for me. I mean, the adult is serious, say, sat down, and different, different uh, the, the the environment, but very hard with the understanding of them of their right, uh, because it is uh, okay. I I work for for yeah the people have a. a have a fear to, to to learn because the nervous the the uh, people feeling is uh what what i am what what i am doing here because i i am old i don't i i don't i i i think i i don't i don't i i, I don't want i don't want to do but it is very hard with the mental, with the uh, with the uh, skills. But uh, I had this experience. I try. I I work for for some some weeks, uh, some weekends with with them. Uh, but uh, you know, if they don't don't. Uh, don't have a sequence, or don't, or, or, or they didn't ongoing. The 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 learning uh, is a it's a problem, right? But because uh, each 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 of them uh, have a different uh, obligations with the the work with the family, but I I I I didn't. Uh, how do you say? No pude continuar. I didn't I, continue. I couldn't continue. I okay. I couldn't continue for different situation. Not for me. Uh, for 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 day. But it's different. The behavior different. The the environment different. The the the, the, the learning of each group. Okay. So very good, thank you. So that is true. I mean, yeah, as I was telling you, all the students are different, uh, and all the the groups are different. Even if you teach the same topic, the same subject, yeah. definitely it's going to be <laughs> totally, totally different. And it's a very nice experience. I mean, because uh, you as a teacher, you need to adapt. Right? You need to yes. check what you're going to do. So that is that, that. That is the 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 the, the that that is the the knowledge how to teach them in that in in that time but with the the time i i have a more uh, i think more i i i i i know we uh, that i i i i can adapt very good perfect so yes thank you it's, it's nice to teach, you know. Uh, if you really want to learn something, teach. Yes. If you teach, that is a very good way for you to learn. Also, I was remembering uh, once I, I remember that I saw uh, 
like a like a wall that is said now it said uh, in the world there are three hundred fifty thousand uh, kids that are analphabet. Oh, okay. No one of them is in Cuba. In my in Cuba is an obligation for everybody to go to school and finish. Yes. And the government is going to pay for all the education. That's why I mean, yes. uh, some of the best doctors in the world are dead in Cuba, right? Because they they have to they have to do that. The government is going to pay for that one. So yes. it's a very good. Same happens with, uh, in other countries, right? For example, I was reading that in Sweden, in Sweden you can learn. You can go to the university and learn as many titles as you want, as many. Okay, very good. Uh, up to the age of 50 years old. So, and you don't have to pay anything. I mean, the no government is No more than the, 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 the social problem because we, uh, every country has different uh, social problems. Exactly. In politics, so, uh, anything. Yeah. It's very interesting, you know, education is one of the most interesting topics and it's one of the most complicated to do. I mean, I mean for you to fix that one, you need to be the president of a country. Right? So it's difficult yeah. to be a president. I mean, uh, well, we are not going to discuss about that one. But anyways, uh, let's check about how adults learn. Just remember that if you go and train people in the workplace, of course, you're going to be uh, dealing with adults so so for, first of all let's check what is an adult learner Rosalina could you please help me with the first part hey what is an adult learner first let's discuss what we mean when we say adult adult learner adult learners often refer was a mature learner at adults receiving education. This could be in the form of college, university, workplace, training, or any other means of learning. Learners are generally considered adults in the in if they are over the age of twenty five. Many adults many other learners are those who have taken a break from education. They could be returning to finish a degree or be starting to gain a new qualification. With this in mind, we should think about where other learners' priorities and goals where and goals may lie. Hey, what did you get from this? Another learner is a, a mature a mature learner that uh, wants to to continue uh, receiving education. Sometimes I, I say I would like to study, but then I remember, oh, but I I am fifty two, <laughs> but here it doesn't matter. The the age it doesn't matter if you if you have the the good the good will. It doesn't matter if you are 60. <laughs> I think. Very good. So I totally agree. I mean, there is uh, there is no limit for you to study. You can continue studying. The problem sometimes is that we don't have the time because of our responsibilities. Uh, we're tired, right? Uh, that's why I, I really, I'm really happy about you because you, uh, every night, even when you have to work, sometimes you have to cook. Sometimes there are many things that you have to do. You are here every night uh, in the class. And that means that you really want to learn, right? It's not just because you want the diploma. Some people are, some like that one, they go and they just want the diploma. You, you really want to. So that is a very good thing when you are making the effort because it's not easy. It's not easy to be an adult learner. And that's why, there are things that are very important for an adult. It's different from kids, right? Uh, yes, kids, they learn easier because they have fresh minds in many things, but also they have more time. So that's the only thing that they do. For adult learners, for example, it has to be relevant. 
what you are going to learn. I mean, if you go to a a training that is not in, is not good, maybe you say, oh, the next time I'm not coming to this thing. I, I lost my time. All the, all the time, I I say it to me. All the time that uh, you pay, uh, you pay something. It's not uh, no nobody gives you. If you pay something, uh, sacrifice also time your family i think that all the all that things are the most available that is it so so yeah we don't have time but to lose and uh, we yes we can do the effort but it has to be valuable so we can move on okay then it says adult learning uh principles i guess somebody was dropped let me just Stop and go back. So that is going to be so. All right. All right. So the next one is going to be for uh, Susanna Beatrice. Adult learning principle. Uh, sorry, teacher. Research teaching method may have similar threads. Teaching adult will be a different experience from teach younger people. The principle of adult teach stem from the adult learning theory, which will we will explore shortly. The principle are the adult learning them to learn best under their conditions when their education can be self-directed they need to be somewhat involvement involved. in the plan involved sorry teacher involved 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 in the planning of their education uh, when the lesson plan incorporate Back, back, back from nearly <laughs> and experience when their learning is offered in an active manner, rare that passive. Uh, when the learning is relevant uh, to the current circumstance and can be applied, applied to some aspect. Uh, of their live. lives. Okay, lives. Thank you. Good. So, what did you understand here, Susana? Uh, um, what, um, and Deep common is a uh, uh, tips the uh, the uh, principles learning for adults um uh, but it's a uh, uh, auto auto education uh, <coughs> um is um. Also, um, I don't know, teacher. Okay. <laughs> bad, teacher. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We can discuss. Okay. Oh, I hope you're fine. All right. So, um, yes. I mean, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, scientists, they have research about the way that adult people uh, learn. So, there is an adult learning theory that we're going to check into that one and uh, uh, there are some principles i mean like things that are very basic for the adult learning so and these are like the principle the most basic right uh, there's different situations when their education can be self-directed they need to be somewhat involved in the planning on their education so that is true so for example uh 
in mind that we're going to to check what we're going to learn uh, we choose a topic and then you uh the people they want to to be involved in how how many hours a week or things like that which topics are more relevant so they can decide what's the best for them. so that is the first principle the second one so uh, the lesson plans they have to be with a background knowledge of experiences it's very important. I mean, in mind that I say only about grammar here in the English class, grammar and grammar and grammar, and we never speak about our life or experiences or any situation at work, anything like that. Maybe the class is going to be very boring, right? So it's not going to work properly. The next one, when the learning is offered in an active manner rather than passive, that means that the adults, they, they want to be interested in the course in the class. It's not the same that your boss says uh, at your work, you need to go to classes every night. It's an obligation. I mean, if you do that when you come to the class that way, you you won't be happy to be right? only because of that one. So you need to look for the training for that kind of education. And the last one, this is one of the most important parts. When the learning is relevant to the current circumstances and can be applied to some aspects in their lives. So this is crucial for adult learners. There has to be something that you learn that you can actually uh, use in your lives, in your work, in any kind of situation that you are trying. So this is one of the most important things, okay? Let's check about the next one that is actually the adult learning theory. So in general, uh, let's see. Wendy, Maribel. Okay. Other learning theory. So what is the adult learning theory? The adult learning theory or and andragogy 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 and what andragogy andragogy is the concept of how other adults learn that theory was developed by Malcolm Nogles in 1965 68 and it high, highlights mm -hmm. how adult learning differ from younger learning. According to adult learning theory, adults differ from children, children, because adults adults need to understand why learning is benefic beneficial. The main points of this theory are that other adults learn are self direct directed and okay. sorry yeah go ahead okay they respons responsible for decision adults learn tend to be seeking education for their needs and goals the the K the K difference with younger learn is that the letter letter are often learning due, due to parents and teacher involved because of this K sorry I don't see okay I'm gonna move don't worry the C sorry I don't remember. Involved because it's the K difference. You no. Um, take responsibility for decision. Adults learn tend to be seeking education for their needs and goals. They they key difference with younger learn in that the letter are often learning due to parents 
and teacher involvement because of this key difference you need to approach approach of other adults learns differently differently from how you good good with young learn good what did you understand now oh chair um um adult learn theory mm -hmm. Uh, is uh, the the theory say uh the adult adult is different for children, uh, for a uh, a uh, I adults understand the beneficial, the learning, it uh, learning is beneficial beneficial. Is hey. uh, and in the adult is responsible of decisions and I shall know. Okay, very good. So this is interesting. I mean, the andragogy is the uh, the adult learning theory. So that is the name of that one, okay? And uh, uh, well, of course, the main point of this one is that uh, adults, they learn different from kids and younger people right and they are different because it says adults need to understand why learning is beneficial so that is very why why am i going to go to this training to this i don't know to this activity uh, anything like that also teacher, go ahead teacher, uh, i think that the tiredness is an important factor making it more difficult for an adult to learn in comparison to the chill, the June, for example. Definitely. So that is something that affects because, I mean, you have lots of responsibility, your family, your work, many things, right? Your house. So if you are going to invest time in this one, it has to be uh, this way, I mean, it has to be beneficial for you, okay? And it says that other learners are self-directed. So because you decide, you decide to go to a training. Uh, for example, for this English course, nobody forced you. Right? You thought for yourself, hmm, it's a good, it's a good opportunity for me to learn English. It's going to help me in my life, in my work to watch movies, I don't know. There are different goals, but you decide out, right? So you say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my effort, right? Also, it says that we need uh, goals. So we need to have specific goals on what to achieve whenever we're doing these uh, decisions to learn, right? Okay, and uh, I mean, yeah, the, the younger, I mean, for example, when you were younger, probably your mother or your father said, you need to go to university, right? Choose a career and do it. So, yeah, you have to think, what am I going to do? Maybe you weren't ready, but you have to do something about it. So this is different. Here, we are here because we really want to, okay? So these are like part of the andragogy, the adult learning theory. So characteristics of adult learners. So, first part is going to be for Maria Elena. Um, characteristic of adult learners. Um, now that we know the basic principle, <laughs> principles of the teaching adult learners, let's look at what characteristics we can expect to see. Keep these characteristics in mind when cost constructing your lesson plans and content. We can more easily create effective educational resource uh, when we know exactly how we'll be teaching. Okay, what did you understand on that one? Uh, we uh, learn in the paragraph uh, before. 
different paragraph um, principle of the learning adults is not the same as younger. Um, in this, uh, explain uh, characteristics and we need construct uh, lesson plans and content for the adults because maybe the structure the the mind in the adult is different and the younger and in andragogy we need this for the attention of the people I hey, think Perfect, thank you very much. That is it. I mean, yeah, since we know what is the theory of the adult learners, that they have to be motivated, they decided to come to the teaching, they need to have a goal, and it has to be relevant, we can check about some characteristics, right? If we understand the characteristics of adult learners, it's going to be easier to get the attention of them whenever you are providing a, or delivering a training or anything like that. And uh, we have the first one here that is, Adult learners have life experience. Adriana Stephanie. Not possible. Uh, Manuel Antonio. Not possible. Carla Vasquez. Okay. Adult learners have life experience. It's safe to assume that mature learners will only younger students bring with them a well of life experience. Adult learners many have for sure our career before studying again, traveling the world, or even raising a family. This is great and it means that adult lear learners will have a lot of varied knowledge to share. Okay, very good. What did you understand in this one? Um, I think that the adult learn uh, about, about the their experience in in the life because the, the adults have more histories inclusive and more um, more well, finally more experience teacher the experience in the adult no comparisons with with the younger, for example. Okay, very good. So that is it. I mean, uh, if you see here in the classes, sometimes we speak about your experiences. You tell what happened to you when you were a kid, or in a trip, or anything like that, because that is important. When you learn in that way, uh, and you link the knowledge to the life experience, is is better, right? you learn faster, you learn better. So it's important. As, as, as adults, we have more opportunities, a different experience in the life. That is it. Very good, perfect. So let's check to the next one. Adult learners are driven to achieve their goals. Uh, let's see. My bacon. Not possible. Uh, Silvia Suleima. Mm, okay. Okay, teacher. Okay. Uh, uh, adult learners are driving. Driven. Driven. Driven to achieve their goals. Most older learners will be force forcing education out the choice out of choice whether it's to learn a skill for a new career 
or just try something new. Chains are that they have made made an active decision to pursue education. When teaching adult learners, you may find that they are more driven to get the most out of their learning. Okay, what did you get from that one? Um, I uh, I understand that this person are more too easy of teaching or not? Okay. Uh, yes, it's not that it's easy, but it's that they want to achieve their goals. Right? So uh, when you are an adult learner, you have your goals and then you want you want to achieve that one. If you see or you perceive that you are not achieving your goals on the learning path that you have, definitely you change it. So you say, ah, no, this is not for me. I'm going to change it. So that is something that happens because you uh, you have decided that one. Okay. Okay, the next one says adult learners are independent. Uh, Gloria Elizabeth. Not possible. Uh, Walter Mauricio. Adult learners are independent. And since an adult learning and come from our worlds of life, and you think that they are far more independent than uh, younger learning, adult learning, and often now, what goal they knew <clears throat> they need to achieve it and can harm in those independent. This means that they often like making their own decision <clears throat> regarding their learning. Hey, what did and, you understand here? And my case teacher and is no not comparing the <laughs> the independent adults. For example, and I am independent. Uh, my wife and work and work tonight different schedule. And and then and I prepare a, a dinner, prepare a, a a, a lunch, a different. I cons I consider the uh, the the person independent and in different areas. In an example, the 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 class um, is similar. Is similar a uh, uh, independent and and. And all the life. Okay, so that is it, right? Yes. Since you have experience, you know what you want and what you want to achieve. And also you have experience uh, doing many other things like having a job. Uh, yeah, you are more dependent. So you know what uh, you would like to have kind of in the matter of, of education, right? Good. So those were the characteristics. Now we're gonna check about adult learning styles and techniques. So with the characteristics of adult learners and principles of adult learning introduced, let's think about some useful techniques for adult learners. The first one is encouraging involvement and independence. Edwin Alexander. Not possible. Mario Vigeda. Not possible. Alejandra Nujera.
Not possible. Let's see them. Okay. Susana Beatriz. Okay, teacher. What encoding involvement and yeah, independence? Encouraging. Encouraging. Encouraging involvement and independence. This this approach encourages individual to become more involved in their learning. Sizing adult things things adult learning prefer to be involvement to their education. You you should let them make decisions and listen to their input. Ask for feedback from adult learning and offer more freedom with lesson planned, planned and activity. You can even, even allow from self guy study if the soul sweet the need of your learning more. <clears throat> okay. What did you understand here? Um, um is a uh, um for for adult um is a uh, is a necessary for uh, their their education um for is a uh, involvement um in the life um for is make for make a your decision um I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, encouraging is the key word here, right? to motivate people. I mean, this is important. It doesn't matter what is your age. If you are a kid, if you are a uh, teenager, if you are an adult learner, yeah, you need to be encouraged. I mean, the teacher, the program, the methodology, uh, everything has to be there to encourage people to learn. So the same happens when you are delivering a training, right? I know that sometimes you provide information and there's a lot of things that you have to say, but you need to encourage them so they really get into that one. Okay, the other one says active learning. Maria Elena. Active learning. One of the principles uh, that we outlined was provide educational material in an interactive and problem-based manner. Adult learning is more effective when learners solve problems on um, address tasks using reasoning. Reasoning. Tasks, reasoning. Tasks oriented educational tools will be more effective than the standard passive teaching methods when teaching adult learners when the teaching adult learners uh, try to involve a uh, thing like a quiz interactive activities and discussion to involve um, the learners with some creative things you can make sure that our learners uh, are engaged, 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 and engaged, and have a change uh, to get involved. If you're interested uh, in tutor, tutoring, fathering, fathering, your knowledge and regards to increasing engagement, engagement of other learners. 
check all all our engaging our learners with active lesson learning learning course. Okay, what did you understand here? Well, is a little is because uh, in the purple letters <laughs> is the more important maybe. <laughs> Uh, active learning uh, uh, is a form when the adults learning something, so, some, uh, yeah, something. and solve the problems. You have a problems. Uh, the adult it's more easy. The adults uh, inter uh, result for the reason and creative things and you take um general um, explanation and every single person uh, thinking about how um, in a form of creative <laughs> uh, result uh, anything and the last is engaging other learners with the learning. Maybe the best is the YouTube <laughs> yeah. or other puzzles. And you can, with the technology, um, is a form, an active learning, maybe. Very good, perfect. So yeah, active learning is something like that one. So when you, for example, you involve solving problem situation mm -hmm. uh, or analyzing things, uh, the adults, they, they feel happy, right? Trying to check what would be the solution on this one uh, or things like that one. And uh, as it says also, as you mentioned, you, you can get activities so they interact discussions so they are involved creative thinking is the name of that one so you make them analyze different things participate in different ways that is a very important thing okay drawing on their life experience wendy Okay, Draving Esa. Yeah, drawing. Draving this. This. And Draving, Draving on their life experience. We can utilize, no, utilize the life experience that we mentioned earlier. Earlier to amplify what? Earlier. I don't. I don't need. Earlier. Earlier. Earlier to amplify the learning potential for other adults. You could use real scenarios. Scenarios. As example, during the lessons, and you util, I don't know, util, utilize, utilize, utilize the knowledge or you learn where possible. Use open it, open it questions and drown. Drawn on their own experience to to uh, uh util, uh, utilize util, utilize utilize their knowledge hey, taking a very that, that is it so? what did you understand uh, on that um training of their life experience. Uh, is a excellent scenario example of a scenario 
Uh, and the question for the experience is the uh, experience a uh, fish? Um, is in our examples? Yeah. So, uh, and this point it is something that we checked for. I mean, uh, to discuss life experience scenarios uh, in the class is also very, very useful for adult learners. So they uh, link everything that they are learning to their life experience. So it's something firm. Taking a varied approach, uh, Manuel Antonio. Taking a varied approach. Those teaching adult learners should be willing to use a variety of teaching approaches. Since every adult in is different, you should use a range of learning approaches situated situ to the needs of your learning. Lesson, lesson content content can be adapted to meet the needs of individual learners and new resources can be brought in to accommodate all learners. On the topic of accommodating the needs of a learning, it's important to consider any additional help that learners may need. Adult learners may be neurodivergent, neurodivergent in and require additional consideration in terms of learning aids and resources. You will need to consider this when creating lesson, lessons plans and course, course content. So what did you check into that one? What did you understand? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, in this, uh, Announce a uh, we consider when we we are teaching an an adult group uh, we we need to consider that the position or that the level that is participant uh, have, uh, we, we need to applicate different uh, topics and adapt and adapt uh, considering, considering the, maybe the, emotional situation the age for uh, of them and if i if i i can a topic or an idea in my knowledge to to consider that help to my uh, students I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think if applicate or not because if I know that uh, that resource can help, for of course we we can uh, accommodate for the the learners, right? Uh, also accommodate the. Accommodate to the needs of learners. Uh, yes, if I I have a a an, a, a source or a a, a tools that can improve my my material uh, to to learn, uh, I I consider. Uh, all resource to help the learners is very good. 
Okay, perfect. So yes, I mean, um, you uh, as we discussed before, right? So yes. it's not going to be the same, uh, the same group, the yes. same class that you're going to teach. You need to adapt yourself, yes. accommodate to the needs of the learner, uh, and vary what you are going to present, the way that you are going to present something. So that yes. is something very. Uh, go ahead. Yes, include include. Uh a plan, a, a scheme. Exactly, to get yeah. a scheme so you know where to go and then what resources you can use, right? Yes. Very good. Motivating adult learners. One of the differences you may notice when educating adults as opposed to children is the difference in attention span. Your ability to focus decreases with age. So you may have to make a more conscious effort to engage adult learners. By tailoring lessons to your learners and making an effort to motivate them, you should be able to engage your learners. Definitely, this is very important, right? So uh, this is true. I mean, sometimes we are thinking about a problem or a situation, or we're thinking about what to cook at night. I don't know, many things can happen. And the attention sometimes goes, right, goes away. So the person that is delivering a train, you should be able to engage your learners. And there are some uh, uh, some tips here that we can follow. Uh, relating lesson contents to your learners, Rosalina. Okay. Since adult learners tend to learn better when education immediately benefits them, you should highlight how to content relates to them. Adults tend to be seeking other skill or qualification that will have an immediate impact on their lives. You can cater to this by using real world examples and specifying how these new skills will have a different impact on their lives. On the learners. Okay, what do you get here? Um, it is, I can't tell. Um, when when adults learn, uh, the best way to 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 put examples is scattering the the real world examples, things that we live, things that happen in our lives, that makes the real, uh, le the real learning, the real way that we learn how to do many things. The experience is important in adult. And um, how do you how how do we reach? the wisdom to do uh, certain things, I think. Very good, perfect, so definitely, right? So uh, you adapt the lesson to the people that is there in front of you, depending on the ages, depending on the jobs, the department where they are from, you need to adapt that one so everybody gets related to what you are teaching. Okay, next one is utilizing time effectively. Wendy Maribel. Okay. Optimizing time. Yeah. Optimizing time. I know, I don't know. Utilizing time effectively. Utilizing. Utilizing time effectively. Effective. I don't know. Effect Effective. What? Effectively. Effectively. When teaching of adults, it's important to consider that um, an adult learn, learner, learner is likely to have limit time for learning. Adults could be 
jungle, jungle. Juggling. Dead jungle. Jungle, what? Juggling. Juggling. Juggling their education on top of full time or part time job or caring for their fam family. Family. Time and all adults learn. Time is so pre precious. Precious. We shall make the most out of lesson time and be strict with time limit. Okay, what do you get from that one? Um, the limit of the learn of, of the other. That time, that time effectively, eff, effectively. Mm -hmm. The limit of the time. That's caring of families or for other activities. Uh, that is it. I mean, uh, as we discussed also, I mean, adults, they are very busy. They have to work, they have to cook, they have to do many things. So, yeah, the time has to be managed effectively. So, everything that you teach is relevant and then uh, you are able to to achieve the goal. That is the second one. Uh, we're not going to read that one because it's similar to the one that we read before. Being flexible, on the other hand, is important. Uh, let's see, Adriana Stephanie. Not possible. Uh, Maria Elena. Being, being flexible. It's important to be as flexible as possible when teaching adults. Others learners will have an additional responsibility and may already know teaching methods that work for them. Uh, give other learners flexibility in, term, in terms of teaming. Perhaps they have to leave the learning environment early for other commitments. This also includes being flexible with work deadlines and late uh, arrivals. Arrivals. Learners, ar arrivals. Adult learners may have a preferred learning style or we are aware of a teaching method that suits them best. Be flexible and allow them to implement methods um, that align, um, align. With, align, align this with this preference and let them make a decision about their learning. Okay, what did you understand this one? Um, for example, in my work, um, someone of my partners uh, is a better when work with your hands and other my partners is a better when we when he go with the people and make a, a conversation with the people or, the, or discussion and others is the better when other people uh, say uh, say this the these these things and she, and she or he or he they um analyzing the information and all um, need a a be a report a report um in in this month uh, if the all is important 
Okay, very good. So yes, you need to be flexible. Remember that since adults are busy doing many things, yeah, sometimes they will be delayed, sometimes they will be late. Sometimes, I mean, for example, one of the things that I do is I don't give large homeworks because I know that you're busy, you have works, you have families, many things are going on. So definitely something that I uh, I don't like, the, depending on what you need to do, definitely, of course. Good, good. So, yeah, we're not going to check into that one. We're going to check into that tomorrow. So, as we, as we were discussing tonight, yeah, it's different the approach that we have with adult learning. Remember that this is adaptable when you are delivering a training in your company, okay, uh, or anything that you are going to teach. Uh, we need to, to consider that one. I believe, uh, as you remember, we were speaking also about the agenda that we have to have before. So everything is adaptable to this one. You have to research what is going to be the, the audience that you are going to have, what kind of people, what kind of topic you are going to deliver, how much time you will be there delivering the training. And consider that all the adults there, they want to achieve something, right? They really need to do something different. They really need to adapt some skills so they are able to, to do certain things. So those things are very, very important. Okay, do you have a question uh, before we finish? Any questions? No, teacher. Good. All right, uh, so. Uh -huh. teacher. Yeah, yeah. Um... How is the homework for Friday? Ah, yeah. For Friday, you are going just to think. You are not going to bring anything. Think about a topic for us to discuss here in the class. Any topic that you want to discuss. I mean, if you want to speak about Ukrainian war with Russia, if you want to speak about how to purify water from the ocean, I mean, think about anything. Bring the topic, and then I'm going to ask you, what is the topic that you want to discuss? And everybody is going to discuss about your topic, not only you. It's not a presentation. You just are going to bring a topic, maybe provide an opinion or comment, and everybody's going to jump into the conversation. Okay. Thank and you. of course, <laughs> yeah, of course, the three words. Also remember that we need to finish, we need to finish the platform tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day, okay? So you are delayed, you still have a little bit of time. Okay. Good. So let's check the attendance and then let's first a little bit. Ah, Patricia Linares Galdames. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Good. Alejandra Michelle Wesson Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erasu. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto Garcia de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Good night. Night. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Firaeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Arauco. Present good night. Good night. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Okay. 
Okay, my friends, it was very nice to be here with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Bye bye. Good night. 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 Good night.